how do the communications between the brain, the gut, and the microbes differ between men and, and, and women. And with the applications, so both in terms of chronic digestive problems, uh, irritable bowel, bowel syndrome, uh, but also in terms of uh, control of food intake and obesity. And in, in both of those areas, there are differences between men and women, how, how the system operates. Because now they can say, people can say, even without scientific evidence that if you take certain probiotics, it will you know, improve your mind, decrease depression, um, make you feel better. Yeah, I would say in the last, started slowly about seven years ago, um, but it's been accelerating the interest. And um, yeah, so, um, you know, in my own research, I've been studying brain-gut interactions for like, more than 35 years. And um, it, so generally there was not a big interest in it. it. It took really the discovery of the microbiome to make this interesting to everybody. And now it's generated tremendous interest on various levels um, among scientists. Um, well, I mean, one of the main influences on, on the diversity and abundance of microorganisms um, is really is diet and is environmental factors, not really genetics that much. So people ate a very different diet. It was very high in, in plant-based foods because the caloric density is not as high as with meat or with fat. They had to eat a lot, so a lot of fibers increased the abundance and diversity. If you look at it today, it's been going down stepwise. Every decade, there's less abundance and less diversity in the gut microbiome. We're prone to a lot of uh, diseases that have been increasing in the last several decades. So since 1950, for example, there's been an increase in uh, inflammatory bowel disease. There has been an increase in um, you know, obesity and metabolic syndrome. Before it was, you know, diabetes was in, in older people. Now we see it in children. So that's already indication that how important it, it is to have a healthy, gut microbiome, how negative the consequences are from this decreasing diversity. You know, I couldn't tell you one specific item, fermented the side dishes, each of them a different kind of fermented food, but I would imagine that, that each of these different fermented foods has a different group of, um, of bacteria. If there are good studies comparing the gut microbiome of Koreans with either Westerners or if somebody eats the traditional Korean diet, um, would you know would probably be healthier. So I would say the the one thing that I we don't have good answers for um, for for brain d d diseases. You know, does the microbiome this decreased diversity also is 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 that related to depression or anxiety or uh, autism? Um, so there's studies going on, on about this, and it's possible. I mean, autism has been increasing dramatically. Um, depression has been more stable. So it is conceivable that um, both the pregnant mother, the diet of the pregnant mother, the stress level, the antibiotic intake, all of this affects the mother's microbiome, which then has an influence on the babies, the newborn, um, and also you know the, the, the infant. I do believe they will have a big influence of how um, pr primarily mothers um, and the healthcare system focuses, focuses on this early phase of the, the, the microbiome uh, programming. There's still a lot, lot to do, and um, I, I will certainly continue you know, with my research in this area, uh, but I also see a really important role in, in promoting this, this new understanding, this, um, either in terms of book and lectures or, or films. So. I would say that's, I will put a lot of focus on that area.